Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, Cam. So we're going to continue on with nominal sentences. We said a nominal sentence has two parts, the mubtada and khabar. The mubtada being the subject, the khabar being what you're saying about that subject. We said that the mubtada would be definite and in a state of rafa, and the khabar would be indefinite and in a state of rafa, and they would match in both gender and number. So moving on, we're going to see what that looks like when we add in malsuf and sifa, and we'll also cover the concept of jiddan. So just a quick quick um, refresher on what malsuf and sifa is. It's essentially an adjectival phrase, is that what you called it? Descriptive. Descriptive phrase, yeah, sorry, my bad. It's a descriptive phrase, and what essentially is happening is that you have the word that you're describing, and then the description coming after it, right? So in English, we usually say this as black car, right? There's a description, and then what we're describing after it, but rather in Arabic, it's the opposite, similar to French. It would be car black. Right? So it's like you have the word that you're describing and then the descriptions listed below. Right? And there could be multiple descriptions to it, right? You could say uh, new black car, right? The new black car. There would be two descriptions in that case. So when it comes to Arabic, the malsuf, which is the word being described, and the slifa have to match in the four properties of a noun. And we said the four properties are gender, status, number, and definiteness. And when they come together as a mubtada or a khabar, they act as one component. So if you have a mausul sifa in the beginning of a nominal sentence, that will serve as your mubtada. That's what it's trying to say. They are inseparable. But yeah, the two must match in the four properties. So we have an example here. Al-qalamun nafi'u jadidun. So they match in the four properties, right? They're both definite because of alif lam. They have no signs of femininity such as the ta marbuta. They're not talking about multiple things because they're missing the ani ending, the aini ending, the una ending, the ina ending. And they're both in a state of rafa, as we can tell from this dhamma ending. Right? So together, they're definite. They're in a state of rafa. They're going to serve as our muftada. And then we have a noun afterwards, which is indefinite, and it's in a state of rafa. And it's matching the mubtada actually in gender. We can tell it's masculine because it has no signs of femininity. We can tell it's singular because it has none of the ani, the una, and the ina, and so forth. So we know here that we're dealing with our mubtada, which is a mausu sifa, and then we're dealing with our khabar, which is jadidun. So this would be translated as the beneficial pen. Sorry, the beneficial pen is new. So let's look at another example. We have al muslimun tawiluna nafi'una. Right? So these two match in all four properties. Right? All four. They got the definiteness. They have the plurality, which is for their number. We know they're not speaking about femininity because in their pluralness is for masculine, not for feminine. If it was for feminine, it would be muslimatun. Muslimatun. But rather it's una, which is for masculinity. Um, and they're matching in definiteness because of the alif lam, matching in number, matching in gender, and they're matching in state, which is rafa. They have an una ending, which for plurals, masculine, means it's in rafa. If it was in nasb jar, it would be an ina ending, ina ending, right? And then we have our khabar here, which is indefinite, and it has an una ending, right? So it's also matching in number. And it's matching in gender with the mubtada, which is a mausul sifa phrase. And it's indefinite because it lacks any of the signs of definiteness. So this would be translated as, the tall Muslims are beneficial. And then we go on to a new context, concept here. So huwa jadidun um, jidden. Let me change that. Mistake. Jidden. Which means there should actually be a shadda here. Sorry, let me change that. Jiddan. Yeah, there's a shadda in there. Yeah, jiddan. So this means the Muslims are very intelligent. This jiddan is usually used for severity, a type of emphasis, and it means very, right? And it's actually acting as a sifa, a description, to a mausuf. So 
They're both masculine because they have none of the signs of femininity. They're both singular because they'll have the ani, una, ina, aini, any of that stuff. Um, they're both indefinite because we could see from the double ending. And also, what you may not be able to pick up on is that they're both in a state of rafa. So this has the double dhammas, which usually represents rafa. And this, even though it has a double fatha, it's in a state of rafa because it's fixed. It's always going to look like that, whether it's in a state of nas jar or whatever it's what we call a non-flexible word right and that usually applies to words ending in alif which we have in this case right so this is a non-flexible word and it's in a state of rafa and you'll be able to tell what state it is based on the word that comes before it so in this case it's mausuf it's following its mausuf and yeah that is jiddan assalamu alaikum